think you explained to you. Yeah, I explained to you too. How was it getting in here today? It was okay. There was a bit of traffic, but I'm here, so good. Awesome. So this is your second session um, with Deb and I. Uh, we have a little bit of a, um, excuse me, of a plan to do today. But if there's anything that's pressing on your mind or you want to take a breather or anything like that, um, at any point just feel free to interrupt. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And just like before um, our last session, I will be taking case notes as well as Deb. Um, but these case notes are also yours, so if you ever need access to them or just want to look at what we're doing, um, you have full consent to do that. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Awesome. So, um, last session we spoke about uh, some tools we were going to use just to see where you were and what mm -hmm. was happening and just to give us some, uh, some ways of assessing the situation. Yeah, for sure. So, um, why don't we just, uh, we'll go over some of those tools now, and then we'll, we'll sort of uh, look at them a bit closer afterwards, and we'll see where everything stands. So the first thing I want to do is uh, an ecogram. Have you heard of that? Um, yeah, like briefly. Okay, so we, yeah, that, that's one of the things we talked about last time. So an ecogram basically um, is we're going to, what you're going to do is you're going to sort of uh, lay out all the, uh, all your sort of support. In, uh, in the way you see here, okay? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna put your name here and then the sports around it. You're gonna follow the instructions on here. And then afterwards, we're gonna go over it, okay? Yeah, sounds So good. why don't you just go ahead and do that? Okay. Okay, thanks. Do you mind if I interrupt quickly? Sure. Um, so also on the eco map, you can, um, the bubbles that you put, um, your, you know, your others in, or like your friends and whatever, um, you can make them bigger or smaller or different shapes and sizes, um, depending on how you feel about them. Okay, yeah. So if it's someone that you super love, maybe put a heart in it or something like that, it's totally yours to go crazy on. Yeah. Cool, sounds good. Awesome. I'm winking. Okay, so can you see, remember um, last time we spoke about um, the ecogram. So now we're we're gonna go over it. Okay, mm -hmm. this is this is what you uh, just did for me. So let's um we'll start obviously in the right uh, corner over here. And you've made different shapes and stuff in terms of what who means to you. So we'll start right here. Who do we have here in the corner with this big heart around it? Okay, so that's my daughter, um, Christine. Okay. She's 11 years old. Um, she lives with me in um, our apartment. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously big heart. She's my daughter. Okay. Um. Yeah, um, and we have a really good relationship, so I put um, a solid line to represent that. That's good. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, uh, below that we've got your mom. We've got a nice big round circle around her too, so I'm assuming that's, that's a good support system in your life. You get along well with your mom? Yeah, I do. Um, she's been there um, through a lot um, of different events in my life. Mm -hmm. um, she also has a solid line, which represents a good connection between the two of us. Mm -hmm. um, I put her in a um, one of the bigger bubbles to represent um, what she means to me in my life. Okay. Um, as opposed to my cousins, who are also um, a good connection yeah, for I me. Yeah, I noticed that there's also a circle around them too, so that's good. Yeah. Now, um, it's, it is smaller than your mom's, well, I noticed that. Do you not see them as often, or um, is there a reason, or is there a way you could use more support from them? Um, I mean, I do get the support from them. Um, maybe not as much as my mom. Um, my mom is my mom, so she's okay. literally been there um, through everything. Okay. Not that my cousins haven't, but just in a different way. Okay. Um, yeah. But I do still see them as... Um, like yeah. a, one of my main support systems. They're there for you, they're there for Christine as well as him. Yeah. She has a good relationship with Yeah, kid. definitely. That's good. Um, okay, let's move on to this one here now. Obviously, uh, he's your ex-husband. We have, um, doesn't look like there's a great relationship there. So what's happening there? Can you tell me a bit about that? Okay, so um, I put him in kind of a jagged um, bubble. Mm -hmm. um, and I put a squiggly line to represent our connection. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like we don't have the best um, connection because of our history, um, mm -hmm. but he is still there because of the relationship with his daughter. Um, he still comes to visit. Um, okay. So, yeah. And, sorry, you said the relationship between the two of you, this would be your history being the divorce. Um, 
So what else? What else was there that happened? Um, he was, I mean, we had, um, troubles before, um, Christine was born. Mm -hmm. Um, we lived together briefly. We were young. I was 20 years old. So, um, we were together 12 years ago, I would think. Um, and it just wasn't a very healthy relationship, I would say. He was, um, really, like, emotionally and physically abusive, so, um... And was this brought on by anything? Was he, were there stressors in his life? Was he on anything? Was he taking anything? Was he diagnosed with anything that you know of? Um, yeah, he, he was, um, he drank a bit. Um, I wouldn't say that he was, like, severely alcoholic, but he, he did have a problem. So that kind of brought on the stressors in our relationship, especially when he, um, uh, was drinking, it kind of, like, escalated that. So when you say he has a problem, do you mean a problem with alcohol? Oh, right, yeah. 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 And you don't think that, um, he was an alcoholic? Um, I don't know. I, I don't think it, like, affected, like, his job, um, but it definitely did affect our relationship. So I, I, I'm not sure. He wasn't, like, he didn't go to... AA or anything. Um, and when he was drinking, um, I have a few questions. I mean, was he drinking to excess? Like, was he drinking to get um, drunk or just to feel something? Or um, situation? it really depended. Like, he would have drinks often, um, and I would say that he would um, become intoxicated. But I don't think that was like his main plan to. To come home wasted or um, whatever. Um, How often um, did he drink? Would you say it was a daily thing? It was definitely daily, yeah. Okay. All right. And um, did he ever drink around um, your daughter, Christine? Oh, she wasn't born yet. Oh, okay. okay. Thank you. No problem. So um, you said this was the drinking and all that was, you know, when you were together and, you know, maybe part of the reason why um, you two split up. How is he with Christine now? Um, he seems like a really good dad, um, which kind of, that's okay, kind of surprises me. Um, only because of how he treated me, but I mean, it's his daughter, so it's kind of a different relationship. Um, I would say that he's a, a good dad when he sees her. Um, I just can't allow him into my life because of our, our, our past. And what does, when Christine sees him, um, and then comes back to you, does she, what does she say to you? Does she have stories? Does he continue to drink around her or use anything around her? Um, I have never seen him, um, be intoxicated or drink anything while he's with her. Um, okay. and I, I would, I would, I don't think I would allow him to continually visit if I saw that. Okay. So, out of fear for my So child. you're confident in, if it were to come to that point, you're confident that you'd be able to tell him not to show up and he would stop showing up? Um, I would, I'm not sure because he, he's allowed to see her, um, twice a week, um, and it's unsupervised, so he can take her if, um, he wanted to, like, to the park or whatever, and I don't have to be there, and, uh, um, a um, social worker doesn't have to um, be there as well, um, but I'm I'm not confident that he would just go based off of what I say, um, because we don't have a great relationship. I I feel like he would kind of brush me off and be like, I don't have the right to tell him what to do. Okay, so are you aware of like your rights within that parental role when he is just uh, the guardian, you're the parent with. Uh with the rights of the child at that time? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Sorry, are you aware, you're aware of what your rights are and sort of the road you have to take if you didn't want him to see your daughter, if he was drinking? You I were, mean... You, you're aware of who you'd go to and what you need to do if that ever is the case. Just just, just to make you aware so you're not alone or anything, right? Yeah, um, I don't have a lot of experience with that. I would assume that I would go to the court um, mm -hmm. and get um, it... Um, written that yeah he, so yeah exactly you'd go to court you'd get something written up 
uh, an order or stuff like that, a protection order saying you wouldn't be able to either see the daughter or that she would have to be uh, supervised during the visit. So, you know, remember, you always have that option to keep in mind if you ever feel like he's overstepping a bounds. Because, I mean, you have a big heart around Christine and we want her to be taken care of um, at all times, are you right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, just, just always keep that in mind. Keep uh, keep your options uh, in your mind in case something ever, you know, goes awry. But, you know, if he's if you're saying he's being a great, great father and everything to her, then, you know, that's that's all you can hope for, for, yeah. for uh, hope from him um, at this point. Um, let's move to, sorry, the last box here. Let's move over to that one. Yeah, so um, I am an administrative assistant um, at the local human services program. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I love where I'm at, but I feel very stressed in my job because of who I'm working with. Um, specifically, my boss, he um, isn't very respectful um, considering we are in a human services um, department, I would assume that he would be more um, more friendly and he just, I don't really see that mutual respect. Okay, so you're saying he's, he's, there's a lack of respect there from him to you? Has he done anything? Are there any behaviors that are, were questionable that you can recall? Um, I mean, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, um, why don't you tell me a bit about the boss then? You said he was yeah he's just like not respectful um i feel like we don't have good mutual respect mm -hmm. um and i feel like it's very one-sided he'll um make comments to me that make me feel um less than um a person and that i'm maybe um bad at my job even though i feel like i'm doing an adequate job so you um, feel you're doing a great job and he makes you feel like Maybe you don't belong there, or you're doing bad work or wrong work or something like that. And is it only you that he's doing this to? Or no, he does it to a few people, and it just makes me feel like it makes me feel angry. But at the same time, it makes me feel upset because um, he directs it to me. But then I know that I'm doing a great job, okay. um, so it makes me angry in that sense. Okay. Well. That shows that, uh, you know, some confidence that you know you're doing a great job, which is very important, um, especially, you know, if you're not getting along with your boss or something to keep yourself motivated, you would need something like that. So it's very good that you, you can see that of yourself. Um, you know, and it's great to see that you're financially supporting yourself and your child um, without the help of your ex-husband. You know, not too many people are able to do that. So, you know, that's, that's an impressive thing. Um, and I noticed just, again, from looking through this, you you managed to maintain um, a lot of positive support and contact with your mom. You know you've got a great relationship with your daughter, um, your cousins. Uh, you know you manage to make sure that your daughter is having a great relationship with your ex-husband while still maintaining your distance from him. You know, and that's really important. Um, why don't you? I was just looking for a bit of clarification here in terms of the different relationship between the, uh, the mom and the cousins. Um, why don't you sort of, get, can you clarify a bit with the relationship with your mom? You say, you know, you've been there for her before and she's, she's been through what you've, uh, what you've, what you've been uh, through, so she's had a bit more information. But what was her relationship like with your father, maybe? Does he you feel me a bit about uh, your dad and you know the relationship with your mom and how she's coping and maybe what you've learned from that yeah so um my parents were together um for 30 odd years um my dad recently passed away um so we're kind of in the same position like we're we're not really relying on anyone um and we rely on kind of well, we rely on each other rather than um, okay. like a husband or another um, figure for support. Um, okay. So we can relate to each other in that sense. Okay. And so you mentioned uh, you've got four brothers as well, but actually I don't mm -hmm. see them anywhere on here. Would you say they're not a huge support system for you? You just don't see them much? You don't tell them about sort of what's going on? Or what would you say it is exactly? Yeah, um, they live far, so I don't okay. see them very often um 
I mean, we do talk, but it's it's more um, on occasion, like Christmas or birthdays. So they don't really know what's going on in my life. Okay, I mean, you haven't told them. Yeah, if they were to be on my um, eco map, they would be um, maybe like a small bubble with um, maybe a jagged line as well. Um, okay. Just because we don't really have that connection. So you're not your your family, your 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 closest family, but not in that personal space. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. And you would the, were they there for your mom when uh, your dad passed away? Um. Yeah. Yes and no. I feel like um, I was definitely there more, um, because of what we were both going through. Okay. And I was really close to my dad, and my brothers weren't. So. I wouldn't say they weren't there for my mom, but they were there in a different way. Okay, and that's allowed for your mom and yourself to get that uh, that closer bond that you have, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, um, so having gone through this all, looking at the different supports you have, um, w w what do you think about it? Do you have um, any thoughts about any of it? or? Yeah, I feel like I do have a lot of support. Mm -hmm. um, like, I have a lot of people that care for me and that I can talk to um and i do have some like negative relationships like i said with my boss and my husband mm -hmm. um but i mean i feel like for me um it's a good like character builder almost um mm -hmm. to have exactly. like those negative connections because i do have so much support yeah exactly because you know that's the important thing it's important to have that sort of support um and, you know, more or less to realize that you're not, you know, you're not the only person that's gone through this type of thing before. That, you know, there's there's a lot of other people who have experienced the um, same sort of stuff, who who have been divorced, who have had, you know, problems with ex-husbands and stuff like that. And the way you're handling it, you know, it's, it's commendable. So um, you Thanks. really got to remember that um, anytime you're sort of feeling down about it. Now, um, we're going to move on to a different tool here. Or... Okay. So, Casey, you said your father passed away. How did you how did you cope with that when that happened? Um, like I said, he we were really close, mm -hmm. um, so it was really difficult for me. Um, I mean, I did have my mom for support, but I felt um, that I could um, talk to my boyfriend um, when he was in the right mood to talk about my dad and um, grieving and okay and and how long ago was this um about a year ago about a year ago and you said you were speaking with your boyfriend when he was in the right mood are you still sort of with the same boyfriend yeah um we're kind of like on and off um we have difficulties um what did you mean by right mood um i feel like i tend to go back into the same pattern of people that i choose to involve myself with um, he can be really emotionally abusive. Um, he hasn't, um, been physically abusive with me. Um, but I just feel like I kind of choose the wrong people. So, I mean, although he was the support that I needed, mm -hmm. um, it was kind of on his terms. Um, so I felt that was kind of difficult on its own. Okay, and do you know, is there any sort of alcohol or drug or anything involved here with with this gentleman? Sorry, what was his name? Josh. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did you say his name was? It's um Josh. Okay, because I noticed you left him off the eco map here. Yeah, I did that um intentionally. Okay. Um, because we have like an a on off relationship. He okay. is in the picture sometimes, and he isn't at other times and even sometimes when he is in the picture it's just like we're not connecting in the way that i'd hope okay and how has he been with your daughter um he's okay he doesn't have any kids himself so i feel like he doesn't really know how to be a dad um and i mean i don't expect him to because he he hasn't been around for that long so i i feel like that would be a lot for him to carry on his own as well so with the verbal abuse do you feel um as though it's going to progress to a point of violence for you or for christine at some point um i could see that escalating for sure he does become angry he drinks a bit um i don't know if i mentioned that but 
Um, I could see it escalating for sure. Um, I mean, he, he hasn't done anything, but I do have a fear that he um, would do something. And especially in front of Christine, that would really be a concern of mine. Um, he has said things in front of her that made me really uncomfortable. Um, and I obviously don't want my 11 year old to be exposed to course, negative yes. things like that. Yeah, and you're right to feel that way, exactly. Um, okay, well, that's really, really good to clear it up. Do you have any more questions about this? Not as a whole? Um, I don't think so. I mean, have you found it, was, it a bit helpful to sort of go over? Yeah, it was definitely helpful, that? um, especially like talking about, um, the, the supports that I have mm -hmm. and maybe things that I didn't realize um, were kind of a trigger for me, like talking about my um, on and off boyfriend. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like subconsciously I need to make changes. Yeah. yeah, you may need to make some changes, but it's also important to you know focus on those strengths that you have and maintaining those strengths as you have, which is uh, very impressive. Now, mm -hmm. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to hand it over to Katie now, and she's going to do a couple more uh, exercises with you. Okay, is that all right with you? Yeah, for all sure. All right, perfect. Okay, so um, I know that we've done a lot about talking about relationships today. We've talked about relationships between you and your daughter, relationships between you and your ex-husband, you know, the relationship between you and your father. Um, so before we continue, um, I do want to uh, talk a little bit about um, your abusive relationship before Christine was born. Um, I know that sometimes it can be triggering to talk about abuse when you're around a man because um, it was a man who victimized you. So um, before we start, I'm just going to ask if it's okay if uh, my partner Deb can stay in the room or if you'd like to get out there. Um, no, it's okay for Deb to stay. I, I trust him um, and we talked about it. So that's totally fine. Okay. Okay. And everything is going to stay, like she said, between us. I'm going to have my notes, which you're welcome to see, and that's it, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Awesome. Okay, so we're going to do this activity, and it's basically we're going to be talking about healthy relationships and not healthy relationships. Um, what we call this in jargon is like our um, social work, we call this um, interpersonal effectiveness. So it's all talking about relationships and um, you know how you can improve relationships, what you want in relationships, and what you don't want in relationships. So, just like I said, I'm going to use a whiteboard. Um, I'm going to write. Is that okay with you? Yeah, for sure. Okay. okay. So, the basis of this exercise is we're going to be talking about what we think is healthy in a relationship and what we think is unhealthy in a relationship. And then afterwards, we're going to do a little bit of debriefing about that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do you feel comfortable with doing this with me? Yeah. Okay. And I'm just going to ask one more time if it's cool if that's in the room. Yeah, exactly. So okay. Awesome. Okay, so what is your ideal relationship? What do you want in a relationship? Um, you just throw things at me. Okay, so mutual respect. Okay. Keep going. Communication. Yeah. Um, wanting the same thing, like having the same goals. Like similarities? Yeah. Um, you know, think of things with uh, maybe your ex-husband, things that he lacked, maybe, that you were looking for. Absolutely. Okay. Um, or things with your current uh, partner that you want to explore, like romance, I don't know, you know? Throw it out there. Your ideal perfect man. Um, okay, so I can, I can give you a lot of examples of unhealthy relationships, if that's cool. Okay, so you want to move on to unhealthy relationships? Yeah, just because I feel like I have a bit of, like, expertise in that, <laughs> you know? I'm sorry to hear that, but definitely, let's go on. Okay, so I feel like communication has been a really big barrier. Like, lack of communication? Yeah. Um, so when we're talking about relationships right now, are we talking about romantic relationships or just relationships as a whole? It's completely, entirely up to you what you'd like. I was thinking more of like a partner, like romantic, romantic. relationships, just because I feel like that's 
who I have the main problems with. Absolutely. So I'm just going to put this here so that we have an idea of that. For sure. Um, I feel like uh, for unhealthy, um, people that put you down. Okay. Um, who are abusive, whether it be physically or emotionally. Yeah. And it sounds to me like, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but like the current person that you're with, Jake, seems to put you down a lot. Do you feel that way? Um, yeah, definitely. Like, he has been, um, pretty critical of me, so, yeah, yeah, for sure. So maybe we could put less critical? Yeah. Okay. Okay, anything else? Um, I would say that, um, a, a substance abuse problem has been... Absolutely. Yeah, a problem for sure. And when you say substance, um, how do you feel about it, like, rec recreationally or anything like that? Do you just mean substance altogether? Because it can be kind of, like, you know, triggering and traumatizing since you've had past experience with it. So would you be okay if your, you know, dream boyfriend dabbled with it? Or um, how do you feel? I mean, honestly, at this point, I would rather someone who didn't just because I've had so many problems in the past that it's hard to balance that and then to know what what is enough you know okay so not at all yeah so I'll say no substance at all not just abuse just that I think that's absolutely reasonable and 100% achievable okay um another one I've had problems with is um uh consistency people that are kind of in and out of my life and don't really know what they want. Okay. Um, people that are unreliable or selfish. Can you tell me a little bit more about that one? Um, it just seems like they care more about what's going on in their life than, it, than they care about me or um, my kids. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. Is that all you can think about for unhealthy? Yeah, I think that's good for now. That's a good list. Okay, so I can see that we have a little bit more unhealthy than we do health healthy. So I know you said that you have more experience with unhealthy, but I want to get a really good idea of what is ideal for you. So if we could just talk about healthy a little bit more, and if you feel that there's anything you want to um, add on to unhealthy as we're talking about it, by all means, but I really want to focus on healthy. Okay, yeah. Um, I would say someone that um, is definitely sober because I've had that problem. Absolutely. Um, that is thoughtful. Thoughtful in what way? Like, could you give me an experience of, I mean, sorry, an example of something that would just, like, melt your heart? Um, even, like, doing, like, simple chores for me, like, um, like, picking up Christine, um, from, like, school or whatever, um, when I, when I can't, that would be really, um, nice, and it's something that shows me that they care about what's going on in our, in our lives rather than what's just going on in theirs. Yeah, and I, and I think it's something that you deserve. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I do. Um, another one, a big one, would be um, to get along with um, Christine, obviously. Okay. Have you um, had that problem in the past where Christine didn't get along with your partners? Um, I feel like she has, only because she hasn't really had that connection with them. Um, they don't really know where they stand with her, and she doesn't know where she stands. Yeah. Um, and she doesn't want to see me get hurt, so she's standoffish from okay. who she meets. Absolutely. Okay. Anything else? Um, I think that someone who is really family-oriented is important. Yeah. Because you're so, like, your support system is family with your family, so... Yeah. It only makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, especially with my family, I feel like having the same values and um, the same beliefs is really important. Um, I just, I'm 
Christian, so I want someone, not necessarily who is Christian, but to at least have the same like values, good values as I do, would be really important. Okay. Do you go to the church often? Um, I try to go every Sunday. Um, I wouldn't say I'm the perfect Christian person, um, but I go when I can and I take Christian with me. That's awesome. Do you find that it helps you, you know, cope with some of these unhealthy things that have been happening to you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, um, it's nice to get out of the house and not think about um, necessarily the negative things that are going on in my life. For sure. Does your family support you with um, your Christianity? Do they go to the church? Yeah, my, my whole family is Christian. Including Christine? Yeah. That's awesome. That's a great outlet for you. Okay. Anything else unhealthy? Um, I would say someone who is patient um, and who is a good listener. You're definitely getting into it now. Anything else? Um, uh, I have one more. Um, talking about like family and stuff. Um, uh, someone who has their own personal space, so they have their own friends and they have like their own supports and stuff. I think that's really important as well. I agree. Is that something you've experienced before? Yeah, I feel like, although I have the support from other people in my life, I feel like um, the people that I've been with um, don't really have people to talk to, so they're kind of like laying it out on me or getting angry with me because they don't have someone else to do that with. Absolutely. Okay, so are you confident in this list? Do you think we can move on? Yeah. Okay. Good. So next what we're going to do is we're just going to circle, um, either I can do it or you can come up here and do it yourself, totally up to you. Um, just circle the stuff that you have in your relationship right now with Jake. Go. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, I can come out and circle it. Yeah, okay. thank you. Okay, so we don't really have communication. He puts me down. Um, he's pretty critical, so that can go together. Okay. Um, I mean, he does do some sub substances, but I feel like that's not like a huge issue, but I would say like that could be one of them for sure. Um, um, And I guess he's pretty unreliable. He doesn't really think about me first. Okay. And what do you feel about health? Honestly, when I look at this list, I just think of all the things that I, I don't get from that relationship. Like, he doesn't um, have mutual respect for me, and um, he doesn't have friends, so I feel like that's why he is pretty critical of me, um, that he... Um, doesn't have anyone to lay into, so he does it for me. Does it with me. Um, I mean, he is a Christian person, but I feel like our values are very different. Okay, absolutely. Okay, thank you for participating. No problem. So, looking at this list, uh, at those lists, and you know, what's in your relationship and what's not in your relationship. Do you feel like continuing with um, a relationship and maybe working on it with uh, Jake, Josh, is uh, something that you want to continue doing? Um, I'm not sure. I He just, it would be great to have in another relationship, but I feel like I just don't get enough out of this relationship for it to work. Like, there's just so many things that... Are negative about it and he's so unreliable that I feel like he wouldn't be around enough to want to work on them with me. Okay so we're just gonna think about this not as Josh. Um, we're gonna think about it just in general if this was happening to you with another um, partner. How do you think we could work on our communication? How do you think that you know you could address how you don't like being put down? Um, 
How do you think he could address the substance issue, the inconsistency and in being unreliable? Um, I know there's a lot there, so there's probably a lot to talk about, but if you want, we can just pick two that's most important to you, and we can discuss on how you would bring that up. Um, I would definitely say communication. Okay. And in turn, that could be like how to have healthy conversations. So the put downs and the critical um, um, comments wouldn't wouldn't really be a thing. Okay. So now let's just brainstorm together how you could work on communication. Um, maybe sitting down while we're both calm to talk about how I may be feeling while um, tension isn't high. Okay. Um, I feel like that if we were to adjust it while we're having a fight um, or argument, that it would just like escalate. Absolutely, I agree. Mm -hmm. Anything else you can think of? Um, Perhaps maybe counseling, if it's something that, like couples counseling, if you think that that's something you'd be interested in. For sure, yeah. Um, maybe in the future um, it'd be good. Um, I'm unsure about my current partner because he is so on and off, um, okay. but maybe in the future um, that would be good. Yeah, like if these, if these issues arise. Yeah, you know. for sure. Anything else you think of? Um, um, I'm not sure. Ooh. Can you think about anything with um, the communication between your partner and your daughter? Maybe going out more to a movie or, you know, exposing her to like the good side of um, your partner. Yeah, for sure. I feel like I would um, be more careful in the future for who I introduce to her. Um, not to like hide her away, but to make sure that it's someone that I want in her life. For sure. To protect her, because that's what mothers do. Right. Okay. I think that's perfect. Do you feel like those are achievable things? Yeah, for sure. I mean, of course, it's a lot easier put down on a whiteboard than actually doing it, but that's why you have myself and Zeb. And um, I definitely think that these are achievable. Okay. Okay. So, do you want to work on the put down and less critical? Um, yeah, sure. Um, um, we have talked about a lot today. Um, if you want to just leave it at that, I can take a picture for you so that you can have a copy to take home and I'll keep a copy in my file if that's okay with you. And we can always get back to this a different day. Um, we have talked about a lot of heavy stuff today and I think you've done amazing. Like this is incredible. So thanks. Do you want to stop here? Um, yeah, that would be good. So I could actually um, like think about it and come yeah. back with like a fresh thought, I guess. For sure. Maybe next week what we can do is um, you can look at the rest of these as a homework and um, you can talk about, you know, just like we did with communication on how we can, you know, improve that in your relationship. So you can do that maybe with this one and substance and inconsistency and unreliable. Do you think that's something that you could do for next week? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So before I move on, I just want to make sure, see where you are right now, your mood with like a 1 to 10. Like I said, this is a little bit of heavy stuff, so I just want to make sure that this is like an, a good exercise for you. Yeah, it, I feel um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would say like um, maybe a 7. Um, I feel like we did have some really good um, conversation about what I can work on and what I really want, um, especially looking at like the healthy side of it. It's a really like, it's a good eye opener to see what's lacking in my current relationship. Um, so I think it was a really good um, tool to use. Awesome. So I will take a picture of this and print it off for you to take home. Okay. okay yeah. So I'm just going to stick down again. It looks like we should be wrapping up soon, but before we go, I want to do um, a mindfulness activity with you. Um, kind of the same one that we did last week, um, but a little bit different. Before we get into it, though, I, uh, I want to give you a crisis number. 
Um, it's just something that we give all of our clients just in case they're in need of emergency and I may not be there at the time or you just need to talk to someone. Um, also, sometimes when you go to counseling and you talk about so much at one time, you go home and you're just like, take a deep breath and you think about all the things that you've discussed and put it on the table and it might be a little bit overwhelming for you. So I just want to make sure that I give you this crisis number. It's, um, it's here. Oh, okay, perfect, thanks. Okay, so it's 24 hours, you can call any time. It's free to call, so you don't need to have service on your phone or anything like that. And um, they're certified counselors, so okay, feel yeah. free to call them anytime, okay? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, awesome. So, do you have any idea of any mindfulness activities that we could continue with? So sure, what we can do, we can actually just do the deep breathing exercise. Okay, yeah. Right? So, what you're going to do is, just, you know, relax, sit relaxed, and uh, what you'll do is just take a deep breath all the way in, okay? The power reaches its peak. <coughs> and then um, you'll just breathe all the way out until everything's out and we'll go in and we'll do this for about 20-30 seconds okay yeah so why don't we go okay. ahead and do that do you want to facilitate it or can I uh, why don't you go ahead and do that okay. so we're going to put our feet flat on the ground so ground ourselves keep the next posture um, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes if you feel comfortable mm -hmm. are you cool to participate in this okay I'll take a second too so what we're going to do is we're going to breathe in for four seconds one, two, three, four, and hold it for four seconds. One, two, three, four, and exhale. One, two, three, four. Okay, take a second and relax. And we're going to breathe in for one, two, three, four, and hold it for one, two, three, four. And exhale. One, two, three. How do you feel? I feel definitely more grounded. Um, I feel more relaxed, especially like talking about those things. Um, it, it, you're right. It is kind of heavy. Um, like thinking about um, some problems or some some things that I can work on. Um, so it was definitely nice to kind of relax. Absolutely. Okay, so for next week, what are we doing? I'm going to work on something, some ways to um, work on unhealthy relationships, um, some mm -hmm. ideas of how to... Um, yeah, no, for sure. Just ideas of like how you can overcome these unhealthy parts of a relationship. Right. And if need be the case that you need someone to talk to immediately, you're going to yeah I'll call the crisis line um, Absolutely. especially if you're not open or unavailable yeah. or whatever I mean you have my number you can always message me at any time you want but um, yeah I hope that is helpful for you and just remember you have all your personal supports as well you've got your mom you've got your right. cousin so it's important to remember if you are feeling overwhelmed at any point maybe you can't reach Katie maybe you can't reach myself but you're not a alone by any means right any of yeah. this. okay so just never feel that way you'll have people to speak to or help you at all times. Right. And I really encourage you to take a, uh, a copy of your eco map and put it on your wall so that you always have that, you know, reminder of your supports there. You know? Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it was really nice meeting with you today and I'll see yeah, you next week. Yeah, good to see you. Okay, we'll see you next week. Bye, see Casey. Bye-bye.